Let's talk offensive line. What grade would we give this unit this year and for the future? Who am I most excited to see? Which player on the line has the highest NFL upside on today's Locked On Badgers? You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Badger fans? Happy Monday, wherever you are, however you're finding this. Thank you. Thank you for making this one of the first stops every single day in your Badger fan journey. I appreciate it as we build this community together and just make it a little more enjoyable to be a Badger fan, which we do collaboratively as always. Thank you for joining us. Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. Take the stress out of it. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions do apply. All right. Let's talk offensive line, right? Let's get into it. And I apologize off the top of my voice is a little gravelly. I got a bit of a sore throat. Um, I think I picked it up at the science fair with the kiddos. But listen, like Hunter Wohler, we're not missing any reps on this show. We're going to grind through it. And I want to talk offensive line. I've been excited to do this one, but a couple other things have come up. Let's start with the depth chart, right? We always kick off these with depth chart and our favorite badger at these positions. Offensive line is really interesting because it's <clears throat> there's a lot of returning experience. And then there's a lot of incoming young guys, and there's not a lot in the middle, which is just kind of terrifying in some ways, but interesting. It makes it an interesting position to talk about. So in the senior group, you got Renfro, you got Joe Huber, Jack Nelson. Juniors, you got J.P. Benchwall, Riley Mallman. Uh, the sophomore group, you have Joe Brunner, Barrett Nelson, the new transfer in, Leighton Nelson. James Durand is a Richard freshman. And then you got the five freshmen coming in, Emerson Mandel, Kevin Haywood, Corey Coverly. Derek Jensen and Ryan Corey. So uh, it's an interesting, like I said, it's interesting to see you have a bit of a log jam at the top in terms of veteran experience. And then you have a bit of a log jam at the bottom in terms of incoming players that don't really have that, that well, don't have that college experience yet. A blue chip ratio. I didn't do this for every position, but I think for offensive line, it's interesting. Let's go back and look, and I'm going to get into one of the reasons I'm doing this in a second. How many of these 14 scholarship players are four or five star recruits initially? So six of them, six out of the 14 offensive linemen on this roster, according to the 247 composite, which the composite takes rivals, it takes 247 on three ESPN, and it kind of mixes them all together and makes a cake batter out, a cake batter out of it. Um, six of these guys are four-star players or better, right? Jack Nelson, Riley Mallman, Joe Brunner, uh, JP Benchwall, Emerson Mandel, and Kevin Haywood. So it's interesting to me in that if you then look back at the recent history of really highly ranked Wisconsin Badgers offensive linemen, how little we've gotten from that group and how the offensive line room more than any other position, I think in, in college football is really hard to look at star rankings out of high school, unless you are just like a Larry Allen or, I, or, you know, I don't even know somebody in that ilk that is just such a freak show. Um, it's really hard to, to, rank high school offensive linemen. So going back to 2015, I'm going to read you the list of every four or five-star offensive linemen that the Badgers are recruited and got committed. So these are all the four and five-star guys. Kevin Estes, Cole Van Lannen, Caden Lyles, Logan Brown, Joe Tittman, Trey Wedig, Jack Nelson, Nolan Rucci, Riley Mallman, J.P. Benchwall, and Joe Brunner. So 11 guys. Most of those guys haven't like not, I don't know if we've got a, a legit star out of 11 blue chip offense linemen, including two five star guys in Logan Brown and, and Nolan Rucci. I don't think we've gotten a star now. Maybe Joe Brunner ends up being that guy. Maybe it's Nelson. Maybe it's Mallman. Um, but and Cole Van Lannon was was solid. Right. He was a, he was an NFL draft pick. But that just goes to show you, I think at this position, more than any other, it's about development. It's about scheme it's about um the strength and conditioning behind them it's about finding the right fits that's why i'm pretty excited aj blazik blazik coming in this year as the offensive line coach um replacing jack bicknell jr I, it just i don't think he was a fit with bicknell so i think they went out and they got somebody that a lot of people in the industry seem to think really highly of as a coach uh former players speak really highly of so we need to get back to developing is what i'm saying because for a long period of time here the badgers have recruited exceptionally well along the offense line and they've developed exceptionally poorly to some degree like logan brown and nolan rucci weren't badger misses they were industry misses everybody wanted those players every single 
they could have gone to any program in the country. They were universal five-star top of the board type guys. Um, they didn't, they didn't develop. And I think to some degree that's, a, that's because the Badgers have shifted out offensive line coaches almost every year. It's because the strength and conditioning program hasn't been as good as it needed to be. The Badgers have to get better at developing the in-house talent. And I think we're on the road to doing that with Brady Collins, with Blazek. I think that is the, the, the number one thing you need in-house for offensive linemen. You've got to be able to develop. It's more important than landing recruiting stars. Can you develop these guys? Um, there's a great quote. This is from uh, this is from Blaine Nye, who was an offensive lineman in the 70s for the Cowboys, made a couple of pro bowlers. He said, offensive linemen are like salt. Nobody ever remembers the brand they buy. And it to me, that ties into the recruiting element of this. Like, it doesn't matter as an offensive lineman to some degree if you're a four-star, five-star, three-star. It's intangible things. It's developing them. Um, and I think the Badgers have to get back to that. So I'm excited that at least I think we have the infrastructure in place a little better now to develop the offensive lineman in-house. Um, all right, let's go then. That's kind of the recruiting history, the depth chart. Let's now start talking about the storylines. The big, What's the biggest storyline for the offensive lineman coming out of spring? I think it's obvious, right? And, and, and there's a couple you could you could go to. There's a couple, but I think it's obvious. It's Jake Renfro being healthy. <clears throat> it's Jake Renfro snapping the ball, right? It's it's Jake Renfro being full go. I, I thought about this for a while. And outside of quarterbacks, who quarterbacks are always the, the key that, that – you know, cranks the engine outside of quarterbacks. I don't think there's a player on the roster that is more important for the Badgers to keep healthy than Jake Renfro. Not that the Badgers can necessarily do anything to keep him healthy, right? Like it's football injuries happen, but I don't think there's a player that is more vital to staying on the field than Jake Renfro. Uh, obviously missed all of last year. We saw the results, right? We saw it's a super small sample size. Take from it what you will. But we did see a full season where Renfro wasn't the center. And then we saw one game against LSU where he was the center. Uh, the results were dramatic. Uh, he looked great. It stabilized everything. The timing was better. It was the best Mordecai looked all season. Now, some of that is LSU. For as well as LSU recruits athletes, that defense was atrocious. But that's not the only bad defense we played all year, right? Like, there were several defenses we played throughout the course of the year that weren't very good. And we did not look like that. And I think getting Renfro back, having him at the pivot, it stabilizes everything. From a communication standpoint, the center is critical, right? Picking up blitzes, line uh, line adjustments, seeing the defensive front, um, relaying what we're trying to do offensively from a protection scheme. That's a lot typically on the veteran center of an offensive line. Having him in there stabilizes everything. It allows Huber to play in his more natural position, right? It creates some, some sense of calm for both your guards. It makes the quarterback feel better. The snaps are better. The timing's better. I don't think – let me know in the comments. I don't think there's another player on the roster, maybe Hunter Wooler, but I think the depth is better at safety. Now, certainly he's a better player, um, but maybe Hunter Wooler, maybe Will Pauling, but the depth is better at receiver. I don't know if there's another guy, again, outside the quarterbacks, than Jake Renfro, that is more important. We got to wrap him in bubble wrap. If you're a Star Wars fan, put him in the back to tank, right? If you're not a Star Wars fan, that's like this giant liquid take. You can put somebody that's really hurt in and it'll heal them. Just put him in the back to tank all week. By the way, neither here nor there, but I question the effectiveness of back to tanks. Darth Vader spends all of his time in those things and he never gets better. He's always hurt. So I don't know. I, it feels like a bit of a scam there. Whoever's selling back to tanks to the Empire is getting some type of kickback, but Either way, you got to keep Renfro healthy. He is the key to this whole thing. And to me, that's the biggest storyline coming out of spring is him being healthy, him being integrated into the line, the timing, snaps, everything. I think it's fully dependent on him being there because I don't think just we're going to get into it next. I worry a little about the depth. All right, we're going to take a quick break, come back, talk about the depth along the offensive line, some of the good and bad, some other storylines we're tracking. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show over at LinkedIn. LinkedIn remains the number one source for all of your hiring needs. Like if you need to go out there and find talent to add to your business, LinkedIn is the number one place to do it. You, you're not going to find a better place. It's the largest professional network. They have screening tools to, to filter out people who have no business coming into your interview, right? Which saves you time. Time is so important. It's one of the, it's one of the least talked about things that we need to be more efficient with. Like time is value. Time is money. If you can cut down on the number of candidates you're looking for from 30 to five, right? The time save on that's enormous. That's what LinkedIn's here to do. Deliver you the best candidates in a timely manner so you can make the right decisions for your team and be the hiring all-star you were always meant to be. 
That's what LinkedIn Jobs is here to do. LinkedIn.com slash lockdown college. That is LinkedIn.com slash lockdown college. Find the call that candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash lockdown college. Terms and conditions do apply. Listen, we've all probably got tired of this. If you're tired of watching just people yell at each other on, on Fox, ESPN, on the TV, just angry opinions about sports. Um, if you have to turn down the volume with all the shouting, make the switch over to Lockdown Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed every day to bring you the, the biggest stories without the screaming. Lockdown Sports today brings you canvas analysis, opinions and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or on Amazon Fire TV channels that part of the Lockdown Network, your team every day. All right, let's keep going here. Uh, more storylines I want to get into. This one I like. Uh, most likely high NFL pick on the roster. Who, who is the player when we're looking at everybody on the roster right now, including the freshmen coming in, who is most likely to be a high NFL guy from this group? I'm, I actually broke this into two. Um, from the players that are playing right now, I think it's Jack Nelson. I I think there's a non-zero non -zero chance that, that Jack Nelson – has a bounce back year and not a first round pick, but becomes like a, a third round pick, maybe something in that range. I think he's coming back for a reason. I think he's got, I think he got better as the year went on last year. And I think that early season microscope was from some of the penalties, certainly the Washington state game where he got beat a couple times on the edge. I think he's better than that player. And I, when you look at him, he looks like a tackle. He looks like the prototype. I think he moves pretty well. He's got a mean streak. So I think Nelson is probably the, although Riley Mullman could be that guy as well. Um, but if we're looking on the whole group, group, I think it's Kevin Haywood, right? If we're factoring in everything. Now, there's, there's a lot of hype with Kevin Haywood. Hype doesn't always translate, but the early returns have been really impressive. Already getting into the second team in some reps, Brady Collins has raved about him, said his, some of his testing metrics are off the charts for his age. Some of the best he's ever seen. He's actually been really high on Colin Coverly as well in that aspect, so I don't want to leave Colin Coverly out. But Haywood is a left tackle, checks the box. What is the NFL looking for? Tackles, left tackles, right? So – if you have the goods, because of the positional scarcity, that that bumps you up immediately. It makes it more likely you're going to get into that. How many tackles went in this year's NFL draft? Five, right? Four or five in the first round. So the NFL is always looking for that spot. Kevin Haywood has the size, the length, the athleticism, really good testing numbers. It sounds like he's wired like a maniac, which is exactly what you want in an offensive lineman. So I'm going to say – I'm going to say it's Kevin Haywood. Um, among the young players, Mandel would be my second. Emerson Mandel just has unique physical get off, right? He, he comes off the line of scrimmage with leverage and it looks like he's got a roster, like a, a rocket booster kind of strapped to his back. So I think physically on the inside, he could be a, a very good guard. That is an NFL caliber guy, but again, guards don't get drafted in the same spot as tackles do. So I'm going to say it's Kevin Haywood, most likely guy on the roster to be a first round pick, but it's definitely shout out to both of our current tackles, Malman and Nelson, I think are both draftable guys. And then Emerson Mandel. Biggest reason for optimism. Okay, let's get optimistic. Let's break it down. Uh, the biggest reason for optimism is this is a veteran, veteran group of players that played a ton of football coming back under a coach that I think is going to be better for them with a second year in a system I think they're going to be more experienced in. So, listen, Riley Mullman and Jack Nelson, that's, that's a really solid tackle duo. Maybe you don't have a star there, but there's a lot of teams that don't have one tackle at that level. I think both of those are BB plus type starters potentially. Malman, by the way, doesn't get talked about a lot. Pro, pro Football Focus loves Malman. They have him as one of the best returning tackles in college football. Now, I would always say take PFF with a grain of salt, but I'll also say don't ignore it. It's a data point. Um, you should take all the data points you can get. It's your, your own eyeballs, right? It's what other people who watch the game say. Take that data point. Take what journalists say. Take what NFL scouts say. Take take all that together and put it together into a scatter plot or whatever plot you'd use and say, this is how I'm going to form my opinion. Right. And pro football focus should be part of your scatter plot, right? It's a, it's a valuable opinion to take into account. They love Riley Mullman. If we're talking about optimism, Riley Mullman was the seventh most valuable offensive tackle in the country in 2023 per PFF in the country. Mullman's 78.1 PFF grade was a top 15 mark among power five tackles as was his 73.1 run blocking grade. He was also among the 20 best power five offensive tackles in pressure rate allowed at 3%. Pro Football Focus is telling you this is one of the top 10 or 15 offensive tackles in the country. Now, when I watch it, I don't necessarily see that, but I do see a really powerful run blocker with great leverage, good size, a guy who's still getting better. Like he's not at the end of his journey. He's not a senior, right? So he has, he has room to grow as well. Another year under Brady Collins, 
I think I think your tackle group is really good. And then at the guards, you got Huber, you got Brunner. I, I've loved I've loved Joe Brunner since the moment he got here. I think he's physical. I thought he'd be an offensive tackle originally, but shipped him inside. I think he can be a road grader, a guard. Huber is just that super versatile, tough, um, knows exactly what you want to do, is going to give you everything he's got, guy. And then Renfro in the middle, you got five veterans. You got five veterans who have played ball, who have been in college football for a couple of years, and in some cases for a bunch of years, right? I think that's why you're optimistic. If this team can stay healthy, if this unit can stay healthy, I think you're above average across the board and potentially, potentially well above average at center, at one of the guard spots in Brunner, and potentially at one or both the tackle spots, best case scenario. So I think there's plenty to be optimistic about there. This could be a really good offensive line. Now, biggest reason for concern, we talked about it, depth, depth, and depth, and depth again. It's just not a deep unit. And that starts with Renfro, who we already talked about. So we won't go, we won't go a ton into that. But there's not a backup center you feel great about. It's probably Huber switching over, and then that just creates a bit of a destabilizing effect across the entire offensive line, right? Then someone else has to step into guard. That's probably Benchwall, or maybe it's maybe it's Nelson, the transfer from Vanderbilt. Um, what if? But what if one of the tackles goes down, right? And then you, you're putting Benchwall in there, and then what if you have another interior offensive line injury? I, it's just not the deepest unit. And that's why we talked about you brought in five offense linemen last year. You brought in two transfer portal guys here. The offensive coach, the are the, the coaching staff knows it's not the deepest unit. They brought in seven bodies in this last cycle. It takes a bit to address it though, right? Of those five, of oh, those five offensive linemen, those five freshmen you brought in, I think in a in a pinch, Kevin Haywood could play this year. I don't think that's ideal. You you don't want a true freshman to have to play, right? Um it, it uh, it's just it's just touch and go because how often do you make it through an entire college football season, a physical college football season in the Big Ten and not lose a guy or two on the offensive line, not lose a guy or two on the defensive line? Like there's going to be injuries, and I worry that the drop-off can be pretty big from, from the top group to the second group to the third group because there's times where you have multiple injuries, right? You could lose a couple guys in a game. That could cost you a game, and the depth isn't where it needs to be to be a championship unit yet. Maybe you get lucky though, right? Maybe you got pretty lucky in injuries last year. Maybe it happens again and you make it through the season relatively unscathed. If that's the case, again, I go back. I think this could be a really good unit if you can stay relatively healthy. All right. Um, player I'm most excited to see whenever they get on the field is Emerson Mandel. Listen, I love Kevin Haywood. I can't wait to see Kevin Haywood. I like Ryan Corey a lot. I can't wait to see Ryan Corey. Um, I'm excited to see Joe Brunner in, in a bigger role this year. I'm excited to see Renfro healthy. I can't wait to see Mandel. Mandel, is, his film is bowl in a china shop, composite four-star kid out of Minnesota. I think he could be just a bulldozer at guard, right? Just the type of guy we really haven't had since. And he's he's not exactly this guy, but like a Travis Frederick, just type of physical bear-like human being that can move a guy from point A to point B, no matter what he wants to do. Can get underneath him. He plays with great leverage in high school, really strong, quick off the line of scrimmage. I love his physical skill set. I think it's going to take a couple of years. Let's be honest. You're not playing the highest level competition in Minnesota, but in a year or two as a, as a redshirt sophomore, I think you, we really might have something there. So I'm excited for that. Player not getting talked about enough, Joe Huber. Listen, Huber came over from Cincinnati, and he has quickly and quietly become like one of the most versatile guys on the line. Need you to play guard? Cool. Need you to play center? Cool. I bet you you could play tackle. I bet you could play anywhere we need you. Um yeah, he's he's one of the the key pieces that we can move around in case of injury. I don't think he gets the credit that he deserves. Not not the most physically um, intimidating guy. Not probably not the most NFL type measurables, but the type of guy that helps patch an offensive line, right? That helps create just the ability to move pieces around, gives you depth in a couple spots. I don't think he gets talked about enough. I don't think he gets the credit that he deserves. Uh, one of the more underrated guys that they brought over from Cincinnati, this coaching staff. Now we're going to take a quick break there. We're going to come back, grade this offensive line. What grade would you give this offensive line for now? What grade would you give it going forward in the future? And who is your favorite Badger offensive lineman of all time? We're going to talk about that next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show over at FanDuel. FanDuel is the number one source for all your sports betting needs. Uh, whatever you need, really. Whether it's futures, it's parlays, it's teasers. This is what we use on the Locked On Network. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bets. That's $150 to use on spreads, money's par or money lines, player props, whatever you would like. I can't talk right now because I'm so excited about FanDuel. 
FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every playoff shot count. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. It's, again, what we use. Because when you win, it's simple. When you win, it's easy to get those payouts. It's easy to work through the customer service. If you have any issues, the user interface is clean. It's fast. It's simple. Please do it responsibly. But there's not a better place to go spice up your sports weekend, spice up your sports evenings with FanDuel. Have a little fun with it. FanDuel.com slash locked on. You will not regret it. Okay. Let's talk favorite Badgers offensive lineman of all time. Let me know in the in the chat, too, who yours is. Mine is Travis Frederick. I, I mean, Joe Thomas is an obvious answer, but I, Joe Thomas played a little bit before I was super into Badgers, right? Like, before I was, like, crazy about it. Obviously, he's he's the best Badger offensive lineman of all time. Like, he's, he's the dude, um, one of the great offensive linemen in NFL history. All accolades deserve, deservedly go to Joe Thomas, whose number should be retired. He's the GOAT. I love Travis Frederick, right? You talk about guys who can come in and start as a, as a true freshman. He was that dude. Three-star offensive lineman, just like we talked about at the beginning, right? It's the three-star guys often that come in with the right mentality and then can be coached up that become the four- and five-star values. He was incredible. I My favorite quote of all time, right? One of my favorite quotes. I have a lot. But Russell Wilson talked about his visit to Wisconsin. I've said this before on the show. He said, Travis Frederick is the most bear-like human being I've ever met in my life. And that just completely epitomized who Travis Frederick was first round pick of the Cowboys who as because Cowboy fans don't know ball they immediately booted and hated hated the pick until he became one of the best offensive linemen in, in the NFL um yeah Travis Frederick was a complete dude I loved him all right let's grade the position let's start with for this year uh, I'm at a B I think this is a B group um if the depth is a little bit better I, I would be inclined to bump it up I think a B is a fair grade. I think it's a good grade. Uh, it's one of the better groups, I think, in the Big Ten. I just don't think it's elite because I still have a few questions on the edges. I don't think Huber is in a, a great guard. I think he's good. And then I just still wonder about the depth, right? If the depth was a little better, if Renfro had played healthy last year and I, we got to see what that looked like, I'd probably be a little higher on it. But I'm going to go B. I think it's a solid group. I think it could be really good this year if they get a little bit of health luck and a little bit of development in some spots. So I'm going B with this group. Um, grade for the future, B plus. I I think the group you brought in in the 2024 cycle was excellent. I, I think that group was absolutely, absolutely excellent. Right. I talked about Haywood and Mandel, but I love Ryan Corey. Interior offensive lineman moves really, really, really well. I think that's probably your future center. I love his game. I love his game. Colin Coverley has come in 6'6", six, six, over 300 pounds. He's another guy that, that Brady Collins has talked really glowingly about. And then you still have Derek Jensen. Derek Jensen is at 6'7", kind of prototypical right tackle from Wisconsin, three-star guy. You know, that's the type of guy that three years from now, four years from now, becomes a starter and a really solid one as a redshirt junior and a redshirt senior. So not everybody works out. That's recruiting. Not every one of these will work out, but I like the physical skills that they brought in. So I'm going to say B-plus for the future, B for right now. And that's the offensive line preview. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know who your favorite offensive lineman of all time is and who your what your grades are for this offensive line room. With that, on Wisconsin, really fun shows coming up this week. So stick with us. We will talk later, and let's go.